Western Co showrunner Robert Kirkman. I feel, uh, you know, I can't answer that. Right, yeah. What, what's above royalty? Right, I think, right. Or Desmond? Uh, <laughs> God? Uh, Benevolent? Yeah, there we go. I think that we're finding Mark at his lowest possible point at the beginning of our second season. Well, I think one of the things is we don't want to hide that. Thing. We're going to show you how Mark's changed. Because we pick up basically right, I don't think that's a secret, at the end of season one. So, uh, you're going to see how he's changed. You're going to see what the ramifications and reverberations of season one are on screen. So we're going to show you. And he's not the only one who's been impacted by this. We are watching. There's there's a level of grief that's kind of woven through this season, it feels. Everyone who trusted Nolan is really suffering. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, Debbie Grayson, played by the amazing Sandra O. Oh. Uh, yes, thanks. Huge round of applause. Um, you know, her world has been shaken to its core, and she's a huge aspect of the show, much bigger presence in the show than she is in the original comic book series, and she's really like the, uh, you know, the heart and soul of the show. She's our human character that has to kind of deal with all of these crazy superhero, like, events that are happening around her. And uh, again, like we start in such a, a dark and broken place at the beginning of this season, the world is reeling from this Omni-Man reveal. And uh, it just gives us a tremendous place to go as the season progresses. But we're really gonna start in a, in a pretty dark and upsetting place, yeah. which is, you know, a lot of fun. Yeah, I think- A lot of fun for me. <laughs> Uh, I think we've been That's been a lot of fun. I think that uh, uh, we have this tremendous roadmap ahead of us. We have a 144 issue comic book series that we're able to kind of say, okay, like, you know, spend more time here, spend less time there. Um, you know, I, unlike when I was doing The Walking Dead, uh, the comic book series hadn't completed when I was working uh, on that show. And so I didn't know a lot of things that were, you know, far ahead of us. And uh, it's been completely different here because we, we know like exactly where the show is going, and we're able to, uh, you know, build things up and, and uh, you know, work accordingly because we have that, uh, uh, you know, those benchmarks along the way that we can hit. Yeah, I mean, there's natural places where you maybe you want to break a season, but but for me, the way I think about it is we have the comic, we have this amazing comic. That's what the show is. What we do in a couple of places is not so much compress it, but we try and find sometimes the space between the panels. We try to open that up a little bit, and then maybe there's a bit more story there. You know, we can expand on things. Can just audio come through here for a while first, then bring in picture gradually. So there's a lot of directing that you can you can do do that to really bring it to life in, in new and interesting ways. So all right, so let's talk about that. Taking the visual of the books and translating it to the television show, where it's so authentic, it is you know it, it feels like page to screen, direct page to screen. But then you also have these incredibly brutal, bloody sequences that kind of are so, they're so juxtaposed against these primary colors that you're working with. How is that, how is that for you guys to be looking at a page or a screen or a design or a storybook even and say like, have this beautiful imagery and then have his face torn apart? Well, I mean, I think this is where we talk about Corey Walker. Um, you know, Corey's co-creator of Invincible, he was the uh, lead character designer on season one, uh, co-executive producer on season two, and uh, really was key in like bringing the visuals from the comics into the show. Um, he set the entire visual language for the first season, and uh, you know, really just like you know, put us in a great position to like move into season two and three and expand the show. Uh, Sean O'Neill is our art director, taking over with season two of the show, and he's been working like very close at hand with Dan Duncan, our supervising director, to uh, like, you know, push the boundaries of what we can do visually. And it's great being able to take some of the most affecting panels that Ryan Otley was able to put together in the show and adapt them into our animated language and see just how different they can be with like, the, just adding motion and, and adding sound, like 
see it moving and you hear the sounds of it and it's like, oh my gosh, that is 10 times worse than what we accomplished in the comics. There's certain sounds in the show where you're like, oh, that, did, that was not on the page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have this incredible new uh, group of actors coming into the show as well this season. Um, we've got Peter Cullen. Oh my gosh, Peter Cullen. Peter Cullen, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, Tatiana oh. Maslany. Yes, Tatiana uh, That's And Sterling K. Brown. Yes. yes. As soon as you hear him, you're like, oh god, this is going to be good, and then it gets great. Yeah, no, he's been so excellent in the show. And you have Jay Farrow and Ben Schwartz and... You know, Ben Schwartz, man. Well, you know what I love? You know what I love is that for an animated show that like has moments of humor, you have great comic actors doing these voices. I mean, the array of actors that we have working on this show is so wide, and, and, and the skill sets that they bring is so varied. It's, it's a really like fun process, like putting it all together and seeing mm -hmm. what they all bring to the individual roles. I think that's part of the... the Greatest of the show is that diversity of actors. We have we have Emmy winners, we have the yeah. Oscar winners, and we have some of the best comedians around. Yeah, and it kind of all comes together. How are you yeah. getting these people? Because I would imagine that at some point you're hearing from them, right? Robert and I, we, we, we bought a tent and we go and we camp out on their lawn until okay. they say yes. If we us, we don't shower. We just sit there <laughs> in the tent until they're like they're stinking up the house. Yeah. We've got to do yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> So how do you, I mean, how are these people, how are you getting these people? I mean, we hear from people from time to time, but for the most part, I mean, it's a collaborative process between myself and Simon, uh, Dan Duncan, Sean O'Neill, Corey Walker. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, pool our thoughts and get together and try to come up with, like, the best people that we can possibly go to. Uh, Linda Lemontaine, our, our casting director, is key in, you know, like, suggesting a lot of people. There's a lot of times where we'll go, we don't really know, like, we, we, we have like vague ideas about who we like, but we haven't really pinpointed. And she'll just come in and be like, Callista Flockhart. And we're like, oh my God, yes, that would be amazing. Could we get her? And she's like, I think so. And then the next thing you know, we're in a recording booth with Callista yeah. Flockhart. It's just like, I don't know how this happened. That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't the most impressed by. Like, what was that thing where you're like, God, I can't believe we got to do that? <laughs> I mean, I think it was the cast. For me, it was I, at the end of the season. I was like, I can't believe we're working with this incredible cast. And that, that's, you know, we, but you've also worked with TV before. <laughs> you know that they like. No, Amazon's great, right? Amazon's Look, like, if, you've, like, if, you've, if you've ever seen a show called The Boys, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, uh, I'm waiting, waiting for Brian right. to give us a note so that I can right. be like, oh, I don't know guys, I saw some things in the boys that are pretty crazy. Right. Uh, so I feel like we're at a great place. Yeah, I love you, the boundaries. You can do so much with the boys running. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we're just going to hide behind boys. the boys and do whatever we want. Right, right. <laughs> you're, currently, you're pretty much done with season two. Yeah. You're also still working on season three though. Yeah, finishing touches on the last few bits of season two are being done right now, and season three is, is very far along. Wow, so what can you tell us about what you've seen without spoiling anything. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. What would you say, what portion of the books would you say it touches upon? I won't. The, the next portion. <laughs> the next portion. The next portion. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil where the end of season two goes. I can say that there's a, uh, when I talk about the actors that we have for season two, it is a minefield because there's so many in season three that we have to be careful not to talk about. So if you think that the cast expanded for season two, just wait till you hear about who we're bringing into the show in season three. So I think that might give you an indication as to how far things are going. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just so much big stuff planned. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. It's every season, there's, there are people out there that have never read the comics, if you can believe it. And they've only watched the first season of the show. And I'm sure there's a number of you out here that, that, that are in that camp. And I think it's really cool because I get questions like, how are you going to top season one? Right. You know? And I'm just like, yeah, okay, cool, man. Just wait. But uh, uh, when season two happens, there's going to be people that are like, how are you going to top season two? And just just wait until you see season three. It's It's got some cool stuff in it. So let's more. just cancel this panel and do a season three panel real quick. Is that okay, cool? we can yeah, we'll we'll do it. Okay. Roll the season three trailer. Did you, um, did you contact any of your old Walking Dead friends? 
to possibly <laughs> How many questions do you have asked that I can't answer? Um, uh, you know, it's possible that there may be some more Walking Dead alum that are going to be popping up in Invincible at some point. Okay. All right. We'll go back to the technical stuff. Uh, what is the collaboration process of you guys? Get to that point. Uh, where it would have gone in the comics. I, I, there's some original stuff that I'd like to do, like an entire episode that's just completely new material that has nothing to do with the comics, that's like completely out of left field. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, that, who wants to see that? Some, yeah. 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 So that, that'd be kind of fun. I mean, also, like, we went through early on in the books, and actually we've got like a list of every single character that appeared in the books, and so we want to use those characters. That's you know? a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a lot. You know, so we're like... And Ed O'Neill will play one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, no, which one? I don't know yet. <laughs> i got to work with that guy. But yeah, so we...